Hello folks, welcome to my little corner of the world and uh, today we're going to be uh, generating a, a process instance via a REST call. How will we do that? Well, first we'll build a model that's going to have a start event like all good models should have, but that start event is going to have a webhook implementation on it. Uh, it's then going to take the data that's sent in via REST call made to the webhook. It's going to do some stuff and then we're going to see the process uh, as it steps through. The stuff it's going to do is it's going to do some phishing because um, yeah, hooks and phishing, there's a definitely a link there somehow and that's what I'll be doing today. So yeah, let's get started. So I'll be using the web modeler and the SAS version of Comunda 8 for this. Um, so if you don't already have an account, there's a link in the description where you can create an account and then use this for free. So fun, fun, fun. So let's begin. We're going to create a BPMN model. I'm going to click on here, create a BPM model, marvelous. And we're gonna create a very simple process. The process is, uh, uh, so you want to catch a fish. Okay, and then uh, the next part is of course, ending an end event. When do we end this process? When we uh, have a fish, great. That's what our goal is today. And uh, to do that, we're gonna do a very simple thing. Um, we're going to have a little data event. Now, interestingly, this has no execution semantics. It's just there to let us know the kind of input we're expecting, uh, just for visualization. In my case, I would li like the name of a fish. And once I know the name of the fish I want, uh, I'm going to add a task here that's going to let me know where I can find it. So um, decide where to get fish. Um, any sort of decide orientated task can be one of many things. In my case, it's going to be a rules engine, a DMN table. So I'm going to select business rules task. <clears throat> Marvelous. And then obviously I need to be able to see the result of this input. And for that, I'm going to have another task here and it's going to be a user task. So for this, I'm going to call it a user task and I'm going to say select from locations because we can have more than one location. So. Our process so far is going to take the name of a fish. It is going to run some rules to find out where we can find that fish. And then it's going to let us select the place we would like to actually uh, get that fish from. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult. So now that it's designed, uh, you can see here we're in the design section. We can go into implement and actually make this model run. Alrighty, so I'm going to go into the implement section here. I'm going to do some tinkering. The first thing is give this a better name. I'm going to edit the name and say uh, maybe a fishing process. It's a much nicer name. Uh, next up, you may notice a little a red X here. That's because uh, this is a symbol that needs to be implemented and I haven't implemented it. Very fat on me. If I select it, you can see that the implementation section you see here, if I click on it, it'll highlight the place I need to go. And in this case, I need to implement this with a job worker or decision table. As I mentioned, I like using DMN, decision model and notation, because I don't need to actually run anything locally in that case. I can just build a table. So I'm going to select DMN uh, decision. And now it asks me to give the decision ID and results variable. For that, of course, I actually need a DMN table that would be super useful. So I'm going to go back to the folder that I started in, which is right here. And here I have my phishing process. I'm now going to add my uh, DMN table. If I were creating this DMN table from scratch, I would click up here, click new and select DMN table. But both myself and yourself, in fact, have a DMN table that we can use. Uh, the link to that is below, it's in the GitHub uh, repo. If you don't want to build it yourself, I'm going to drag it and drop it here. And we have a DMN table called where to fish. So if I open that up, it looks like this. It takes the uh, name of a fish and then it does some stuff. So let's take a look at the stuff it does. You can see here that depending on the name of the fish, we have a bunch of fish here that are found in a river. We have a bunch of fish here that are found in the sea and a bunch of fish here that are found in a lake. Now, if you can't find it in a sea, river or lake, you can probably find it in a supermarket. So this also takes into account that you might be able to find them in multiple places. It's a collect hit policy, which means something like, uh, let's see, um, maybe haddock or pike or something. Pike is found both at a river and in a lake. 
Hurrah, good for Pike. And probably the supermarket as well. So this is how we're going to do this. So we need the name of our table and we need, uh, so the name of a fish, we'll be able to put it through our table and get a location for it. So now that we actually have our DMN table, uh, how do we go back to our process here and attach it to the, um, uh, this little DMN guy right here? Well, we could, we have two ways of doing it. The first way is the manual way, where as I mentioned before, I would add the decision ID and the results variable. Um, or I could click on this little button here to select the uh, uh, DMN table here and link it. And now it fills that in automatically. So super cool, right? Uh, but we're not finished yet. We still need a re results variable. And then we need to build a little front end here. And then finally we will build that webhook. So why do we need this results variable? Well, the results variable here is going to put whatever the DMN tells us into a variable that we then need to display to the um, end user. And in this case, I'm going to put in a uh, phishing locations because the DMN table will give us back one or more um, locations where we could possibly find these fish. And now we need to uh, take this variable fishing locations and then somehow give it to uh, the front end as a user here to select. And to do that, I'm actually going to build a front end. So uh, we're going to go back to the uh, folder where all our stuff is. And uh, I'm going to click new again and build a form. Now you can copy the form in the repo if you like. I, of course, have decided that I'm going to actually go and build this from scratch. And this is the phishing location form. Um, so we're going to, we have a web sort of uh, modeler here for the form as well. Um, and we're going to start with a some text here. And we're going to, the text is going to say, um, uh, select fishing location. Fantastic. Um, next, we're going to have a text field. This is going to show the uh, name of the fish. Um, so it's going to have fish there. So whatever the input was basically will be displayed and we'll disable this to make sure it's read only because the user can't change it. So it's the name of the fish that was given. Um, next, we need a, we will get a list uh, back from locations, right? So we actually need a drop down of some kind. So let's go with a select here. And this is going to be select a location. Um, and this is going to be the, the location selected is going to go into a variable called location. So the key thing here is the name of the variable that will be created with the value of whatever is selected here. Now this is uh, going to be a dynamic list because we don't know what's going to come back. So we can go here to source options. It's not going to be static. It's going to be a, an input data. And then we can actually take a look at the dynamic options and this can be the uh, input uh, value. Now we know what we'll get. We'll get a list from the DMN and it's going to be uh, fishing locations. Okay, so whatever the value passed to our DMN table, we're putting, we're calling it fishing locations. We're gonna put it into this drop down list. Okay, and now uh, we shall give this form a cool name uh, select fishing location form. Marvelous. And now we basically have our form done. Uh, let's go to our model again and let's attach it in exactly the same way I did for my DMN table. I can uh, zoom in here, select my um, user task, select the thing here and our form. There we go. Import. Hurrah. Okay. We've done almost everything now. The last thing, of course, is uh, doing the um, uh, webhook. So we'll do that right now. The webhook obviously goes on the start event. And if I select it, I can then see we have a little wrench. And if I click the little wrench, you can see that you can um, change this into the usual event types, message, timer, condition. But also you may see that we have some connectors here. Uh, one of them is the webhook connector, which is the one we want to use. So I'm gonna select that. And once I do, the properties panel on the right changes uh, to reflect what we wanna do. Um, so let's take a look at what happened. We need an ID for a webhook. It's gonna be part of the URI. So I'm going to URL, I'm gonna put in um, fish, Fishing locations uh, as our webhook ID. And then down below a little bit, we have activation condition and variable mapping. So let's first talk about activation condition. So when the request comes in, we will trigger the connector if a certain condition is true. Now, this, of course, is a very important process um, made specifically for people interested in fish. 
fish people. So for that, I'm going to ensure that the people that actually are going to be requesting this have specifically said they're fish people. So for that, I can say to get the request, request dot body, and I'm looking for a variable called status that's going to come in with the with the with the request, and that needs to equal fish person because obviously we need how we have standards for our process and fish person is the main one. Okay, so once that's satisfied, we'll then take the variables that come in with it and then uh, we'll map them to variables in the process. Um, we need a variable called fish for the DMN table, which means I'm going to have fish and that is going to be a variable that will be populated with the um, a value in uh, the request body. Uh, a variable called fish. We'll also have, this, why not keep the status so that we know our fish people. Request.body dot um, status. And then finally, we'll just have a ID. Why not? Just for fun. Request.body dot ID. Okay, so now what's going to happen is we have a uh, uh, generated webhook that is going to um, uh, require a variable called fish person, well, status with variable fish person, and it's going to give us three variables one called fish, one called status, one called ID. Um, the webhook doesn't exist yet because we haven't actually deployed our process. That'll be the thing we do right now. First up, I'm going to hit the canvas there and I'm going to give this a good name fishing process. And let's also put this here. Fantastic. And, and now we can deploy it. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to click on deploy. Um, I have Alfie, which is my current favorite uh, cluster. A uh, cluster that you're selecting here is basically a combination of the engine and the three web apps, task list, operation optimize. So when you select an engine to put it into, that's where it'll go. It'll go into that cluster. So I'm going to click deploy and uh, Alfie should get that. Great, it's deployed um, and we can check that out. We can actually go along here. We can go to operate, go to Alfie and that'll bring us to the web app that's intended for um, uh, admins. So it'll, um, it'll show us once it loads, there we go, that we currently have exactly one process right here. It looks like this. But of course, a process is not everything here. We also need to deploy the DMN table, which is also an independent artifact. And we can do that in exactly the same way. I'm going to go back to our model, go to this lovely uh, page, go into our DMN table, and I'm just going to click on deploy and also deploy it to the same cluster, which is ELF. There we go. And that's deployed. And it's time to generate the webhook. Going back to our model, uh, we should be able to select the start event now. And interestingly, the start event now uh, will be able to generate the webhook link because now that we've deployed it, uh, if we click on the webhook button right there, it'll generate, there we go, um, a webhook for that cluster. If you had multiple clusters, you could have multiple links. So if I copy this, I can now maybe send in a request to see what we can do. Um, let us go to um, our postman which is where I'm going to be sending uh, my request from. You can send it from anywhere you like, but I like Postman. I'm going to put the link in here. I'm going to change this to a post because we're sending a request. Um, I'm going to go to the body because we do require um, a certain amount of, um, of payload. And specifically, we first need a variable called fish, which is the important one. Uh, fish, uh, let's go with uh, pike. Uh, is going to uh, let us know where to find Pike. We also need status because as you may remember, uh, we only want uh, proper real life fish people um, here. So fish person. And finally, we have an ID, which is just for fun. And the ID should say uh, Nile. Okay, uh, that's that done. Um, if I let's send this and see what happens. I'm gonna click send, cross my fingers. Haha, -ha, it worked. So it started a process. The return value it gave us was that it says it had a correlation point. It said it was activated. The response data gives us the um, instance ID, the name of the process, and uh, the definition key as well.
And we can actually see the process in action by going here. Ah, and you can see now that there is an instance that has started. I can go to my instance and I can see that we have um, at this gone to this point. If I select the instance itself, we can see the root in more detail. So we can see that it started, it executed our decision. We can see our variables here, so we can already see we have phishing locations. And the final thing to do is we're going to go and uh, complete this task that we created. To do that, I'm going to select here. I'm going to go to task list. And task list is going to bring me to the place where we complete um, user forms. So, okay, so we have exactly one form called select from location. I'm going to select that. I'm going to assign this to me. We can see that we have the name of our fish, which is pike. And we also have three possible options to select from, a river, a lake, or a supermarket. Um, I'm not up to fishing right now, so I'm going to go with the safe option of supermarket and complete this task. And we should see then in operate. Great, that's gone. We can see then in operate. And the process then moves to the next phase and uh, we've completed it. Ta-da, that's what you do.